So this question comes from Mencham Hornbacher. Uh, I saw a funny story that was posted on Reddit. Uh, basically, he copied the wrong line into his local setup and deleted the whole production database, and the backups are not working. Just wondering what you think he can do to not have his entire career, uh, uh, basically to kill his entire career with this one mistake. Uh, so we go over and we take a look at what happened on Reddit. Oh, this poor bastard. This poor bastard. Accidentally destroyed production database on first day at job. Today was my first day on the job as a junior software developer and was my first non-internship position after university. Unfortunately, I screwed up badly. I was basically given a document detailing how to set up my local development environment, which involves running a small script to create my own personal database instance for some test data. After running the command, I was supposed to copy the database URL password username outputted by the command and configure my dev environment to point to that database. Unfortunately, instead of copying the values output by the tool, I instead, for whatever reason, used the values the document had. Unfortunately, apparently those values were actually for the production database. Uh, why they are documenting the dev setup guide, I have no idea. Then, from my understanding, uh, that the tests add fake data and clear existing data between test runs, which basically cleared all the data from the production database. Honestly, I had no idea what I did, and it wasn't about 30 or so minutes after I did some someone actually figured out realized what I did while what I had done was sinking in the CTO told me to leave and never to come back he also informed me that apparently legal would need to get involved due to the severity of the data loss basically I basically offered and pleaded to let me help in some way to redeem myself and I was told that I completely fucked up everything so I left I kept an eye on slack and from what I can tell the backups were not restoring and it seemed like the entire dev team team was on full panic mode. I sent a Slack message to our CTO explaining my screw-up, only to have my Slack account immediately disabled not long after sending the message. I haven't heard from HR or anything, and I am panicking to high heavens. I just moved across the country for this job. Is there anything I can even remotely do to redeem myself from the situation? Can I possibly be sued for this question mark? Should I contact HR directly? I'm really confused and terrified. Edit. Just to make it even more embarrassing, I just realized that I took the laptop I was issued home with me. I have no idea why I did this at all. Uh, two, I just woke up after deciding to dry my sorrows, and I am shocked by the number of responses, well wishes, and other things. We will do my best to sort through everything. Yeah! Yeah, welcome to the real world of technology. Welcome to the real world of technology. This poor bastard fried the entire production database. And so the question is, is what what to do about something like this. And this is where I talk about again and again and again, whenever we talk about security, right? The number one security threat is your own fucking employees. Actually, to be honest with you, the number one security threat are your admins. Your sys admins are the ones most likely to destroy everything. Uh, coming close after that, are all your coders coming close after that is probably you know whoever the janitor is if they they actually sp accidentally splash water on the servers or whatnot but this is the big thing that you have to you have to be thinking about in a, from a security standpoint is what happens if somebody has all their credentials required uh, to go in and attack your systems, what happens after that? You should be able to survive an attack of your senior admin. The number one sys admin in your company should be able to go in, hose everything up. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not. This isn't fucking cotton candy and fairy dust. I'm not saying it's gonna be cheap. And I'm not saying it's gonna take like two hours. But I am saying you should be able to go in. Look at the boss and go. Okay, this is this is everything they deleted. This is everything that they screwed up. Here is our plan. We're gonna reformat all of the servers. We're going to bring our data back in from wherever the hell it's from. We're gonna spin all the servers up. We're going to test all the connections. We're gonna be down for a week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. We're going to be down for a week, and hey, since we're down anyway, you know, we needed to upgrade a couple of servers, so why don't we do it while we're doing it? Um, suck it. And that's one thing you have to talk to, talk to with the, uh, the the sea levels sometimes, is a lot of times you got to tell the sea levels just to suck it, right? They're like, oh, we can't be down for a week. Like, Well, you hired an asshole for a sysadmin. That's not my fault. 
my responsibility is getting everything back up and running. And here's the thing. It's just going to take a long time to pull that data in. We've got to we got to redo all our servers. We've got to reinstall everything. we got to repatch everything. we got to rebuild the network. we got to pull all that data in. we got to make sure that data is stable and reliable and everything else. And then we need to go from there. And so basically, when you see this, and that's what's so sad. That's what's so sad with this fucking little, this junior software developer. Now, don't get me wrong. He should get fucking hit in the nose. But it's not his fault. The person who failed in this instance, the person who is a grossly negligent in this instance, is whoever was responsible for that infrastructure. The person that was responsible for that infrastructure for allowed allowed that information to be out and about, right? So basically what, what this person is saying is everything required to wipe out that database was a documented in form. Right, which means if you have pieces of paper with that documentation, uh, people can pick that up. Which means if you have it in digital form and it's somewhere sitting in one of your file servers, a hacker can grab that information. Um, so basically, what this is really saying is that the sysadmin was grossly fucking negligent, and it's people like this that they are going to start to get sued. Right, there's a certain point in time, right? A lot of a lot of these sysadmins get away with gross negligence, and it just kind of slips through the cracks. Oh, what can we do about it? This is one of the things I want to say with with the Gen Xers in the management position. As millennials start to get into management positions, you're going to start to see sysadmins dragged to fucking court and bankrupted because they didn't do the fucking job that they were hired to do. So when I look at this. What I look at is a CTO was a sack of shit, and the senior sysadmin was grossly negligent at the absolute minimum. And they're trying to blame this, poor, this piss poor little fucking junior software developer for the problem. So this is what you need to look at. Whenever you're building out your systems, any usernames, passwords, any of that kind of stuff needs to be under lock and key. You need to have not just backups, but this is one of the things you, you hear about now is like the whole disaster recovery systems. I just went to that conference for Vmon, and there was a big thing there talking about like disaster recovery as a service. The whole idea of you literally back up your VMs onto other to uh, to cloud infrastructure and not only is the data on the cloud infrastructure but if your systems fail you can actually spin up the instances on their cloud infrastructure to keep you going so let's say your database server fails not only do you have a backup but you essentially run a command and it spins up the instance on their infrastructure you're able to connect to it and you can keep going while you figure out what's going on here so you need to have a backup solution you need to have a data recovery solution you need or dis disaster recovery solution you need to think about think about things like disaster recovery as a service you need to lock down the credentials so people can't do this type of thing and you need to stop beating on your junior software developer because the cto Junior software developer, you can fucking email this to your to your ex CTO. Your CTO is a fucking piece of shit. If your worthless CTO gave gave that information to a junior software developer, the that the the responsibility ends with that CTO. That CTO needs to fucking resign, hand in all their goddamn equity, and walk the fuck away. The reason that they're blaming you, the reason that they're blaming you is because they don't want anybody looking at themselves, right? Because that's what you do, right? That's what you do if you want to protect yourself. You do something asininely stupid, and what do you do? I was a junior software developer. Did it. it was the guy who has literally been here a couple of hours. He's the one that destroyed the entire infrastructure. And then people don't start thinking, why is our CTO so fucking worthless that they, um, they allowed this to happen? So our CTO is so far behind the ball. Our CTO is so fucking drunk or hungover or snorting crack off of prostitutes boobs or doing whatever the hell else that they don't understand their infrastructure is that vulnerable fuck that cto is a piece of shit i'm, I'm sorry eli eli i thought you were being family friendly no that that's the kind of shit that pisses me off this is the kind of shit that pisses me again junior software developer fine smack on the nose you did something stupid but the fact that that cto <laughs> would fire you the first day would look down on you, which would talk about legal consequences. Fuck, if there are some legal consequences, it's that fucking CTO being dragged out back and beat. Anyways.
So, yeah. So this is what you need to be thinking about from a security standpoint is make sure your stuff is under lock and key, the passwords and all that kind of stuff. It shouldn't be any kind of documentation. First fa first failure of the CTO, you had you <laughs> you had the information that can compromise your database literally in document format that can be just handed out to a junior software developer, which means any jackass hacker can get it, which means any jackass janitor can get it, which means any jackass employee that you fired because you're a worthless piece of shit probably has it. So that's the first failure of the CTO. The next failure of the CTO is that they didn't verify their backups, right? If you're going to have backups for your company, you need to verify them. I mean, I understand it's the real world. Maybe you haven't verified them for a couple of days. Maybe you haven't verified them for a week. I, I understand. Look, I'm not saying cotton candy. I'm not talking about fucking utopia here. But if you're running backups and, and those backups are back, backing up production systems, you need to go through and you need to verify those backups on a regular basis to make sure that they're not corrupted. So the second fucking failure of that goddamn negligent piece of shit CTO is they didn't bother uh, to verify the backups. And the final thing is, again, we are now in 2017, so you need to be looking at disaster recovery. And disaster recovery isn't simply a backup, but essentially it's where you're able to spin up another instance of the exact same thing and keep on going. You should be down for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, something like that you shouldn't even at this point have to be recovering you know spending a day or two to recover that's some fucking 2007 shit so that's the third fucking failure of that worthless piece of shit negligent cto that's trying to blame a goddamn junior software developer that's been there all of two hours <sighs> and so that's my thought legally speaking legally speaking i am not a lawyer but again, I think the CTO is in a much worse legal standing than that that junior software developer. Because basically, that's what they would have to... I, I would imagine, I would imagine what they would have to prove is they would have to approve some nefarious intent. Or they would have to try to prove um, that you were trying to damage the company. Right, again, <laughs> who the... F you take that shit to court. So you're telling me a junior software developer who is brand new on the first day... Um, you know, made a mistake, and you're trying to sue him <laughs> because, wait, you allowed the mistake to happen. So I can't imagine there, there's a lot of legal stuff with that. As far as you getting shut out of Slack and all that kind of stuff, again, that's, that's actually hell. The CTO is doing half their job. Maybe they're coming out of their hangover at this point. Um, but yeah, if you if you do fire, but again, even that, even that proves how fucking worthless the CTO is because the CTO fired you allowed him to walk out with a la walk out with a company laptop with god knows what credentials or anything else is in that walk out with the slack account still so they just fired this person for destroying their production infrastructure and then lets him walk out with a laptop slack credentials who the hell else knows what else credentials so no that is what we call a piece of shit cto <laughs> um yeah, and that's that's the other thing too for any any of you folks that are looking to move for a company. This is one of the reasons too you have to look at the company and you have to look at the quality of the company. Is no, I mean this is this is disgraceful. CTO, this he's a piece of shit. He's a he's a worthless. That CTO is a worthless fucking piece of shit. But that's what you have to think about if you are going to move cross country to a company. You want to make sure you're not working for a worthless piece of shit, right? This is one of the things we talk about, the making sure you understand the culture of the company. This is a big thing with uh, trying to get hired by companies where you already have friends that are employees, right? Because with this, oh, no, don't. I mean, you should get you – should, you should, the guy should have got smacked on the nose. And the guy should be, like, fucking, like, cleaning toilets for the next month. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I'd have a motherfucking scrubbing toilets for the next month. But – but th this is the fault of the infrastructure. Um, and so you do do have to worry about that. And so that is something something to think about. But yeah, yeah, I feel bad. You see stories like this. You see stories like this. And this, this is what I hate about the whole thing where people say, oh, we need more cybersecurity experts. Motherfucker, we need more CTOs doing their fucking job. Hey, look, hey, look, I'm CTO, and I, I have money, and I have respect, and I'm CTO. Yeah, so, so what job are you doing? I'm CTO. 
Motherfucker, we just need more people doing their job. We don't need more cybersecurity experts. We need more fucking CTOs doing their fucking jobs. Anyways. Anywho, maybe the CTO is going to try to sue me now. Oh, Eli, I'm going to sue Eli for calling me grossly negligent. You motherfucker, you are grossly negligent, you piece of shit. Uh, I suppose this video is probably not going to get monetized. <laughs> I can see YouTube going through that. Hmm, said piece of crap uh, 50 times. This video should not get monetized. Um, so, yeah, those are some things you should be thinking about. Um yeah, just try to just try to go work for companies that that that, that aren't run by by worthless pieces of crap. Um, you know, that's the whole. That's what's hard. That you see, what's really hard with this person is is this, again. You, you know, you're coming right out of internship, so so you have no idea of good companies or bad companies. But this is the important thing: is you know, whenever you're gonna be hired by a company, we, they talk about things like company culture and all that kind of stuff. And this is one of those reasons that you have to look into it. It's because mistakes in the tech world happen. I mean, I've I've shut down offices. I've done some stupid stuff. But I mean, that's 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 the thing is you you hire a junior level whatever the hell it is, and you get them cheap because they don't necessarily know what the hell they're doing. Um, so you either have to make sure all your systems are locked down to high hell and back so they can't do any damage, or you have to accept the damage. And just realize that's that's part of the cost. Well, we're gonna get this guy for half the price of a senior developer, and he's gotta destroy a database every once in a while. Right? That's just how it goes. If you have a company who, you know, wants to hire a junior developer at half the price and then loses their mind when there's problems, that's that's when it just doesn't work out for anybody. But anyways, that's my thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, anyways. Uh, if you want to join the discussion, ask me a question, have me respond to comments or anything like this, think about joining SiliconDiscourse.com. Regardless, regardless, just do your fucking jobs. Man, motherfucker, here's my problem. Whether you are a fucking help desk employee, whether your job is cleaning toilets, or whether you're the fucking CTO, I just do your job. Just do this is your CTO. This your your job as a CTO is to make sure the systems are implemented so a junior developer two hours into their first day can't fucking wipe out your infrastructure. <laughs> Just do your fucking job. All employees. Again, I don't care whether you're a help desk or a CTO. Just do your fucking job. Anyways, <laughs> see you folks in the next video.